here, so. <laughs> so what's that move called? Look, I, I don't know, the wilty choke, fuck. My opponent is David Garmo. He's the best mustache in all of jiu-jitsu. Get Gary Tony, you can suck my dick. My name is David Garmo. I'm a black belt in the Danny Edgeby, and I'm a co-owner of Assembly Jiu-Jitsu. I'm always trying to put pressure on my opponents, try to break them mentally and physically. My greatest strength is my uh, ability to put myself into bad spots uh, just to make a better position happen for myself. He's been a friend of mine since we were blue belts. We always hang out at the tournaments and we've been talking shit back and forth online. My rule is never talk shit unless they're your friends. <laughs> and I've been wanting to compete against him, train with him for a very long time. It just hasn't happened yet. His guillotines are really, really good. His leg locks are really good. He's a, he's a really tough competitor. He's got incredible passing. I just have to outwork the guy and I think I can. Uh, he kind of moves a little bit slow and then fucking turns it up to a thousand. So hopefully if I just go a thousand, he won't get a chance to do that. Expect fireworks. There's gonna be pain. <laughs> After I take the win, Andrew, I'll take your panic express myself on me. I'm gonna kill you, motherfucker. <laughs> no, dude, no, it's all love, bro, it's all love. Let's meet the competitors in match number three. In the blue corner, Representing Pedago Submission Fighting and Training out of Mount Vernon, Illinois, Andrew Wiltsy. So if you're wondering what the hat is, <laughs> Andrew got his hands on this thing and hasn't taken it off for the past 36 hours. But Andrew Wiltsy, Yes, he jokes around in his pre-match interviews. Yes, he will wear a goofy hat, but Chase, he is all business when it comes to the match. Absolutely, he's ready to prove why he's number six ranked 185 grappler in the world. And his opponent in the red corner, representing Assembly Jiu-Jitsu, training out of Detroit, Michigan, David Garmo. <laughs> David Garmo of Detroit, Michigan, Assembly Jiu-Jitsu. You saw his teammate Heisen Rita compete earlier in the prelims, but now it's his turn to make his debut here at who's number one. And he's going to go up. Well, he's currently unranked as a middleweight chase, but going up against the number six ranked middleweight in the world, Andrew Wilty, that's a big opportunity. 40 of his 50 most recent wins have ended by submission. That's an 80% sub rate in all victories. So keep an eye out for that. Taylor the tape. Three years elder is Garmo, one inch shorter, unranked, going up against the number six ranked middleweight in the world in Andrew Wilty. And a little mention about the odds as well is that David Garmo is a plus 275 underdog. Wilty is the minus 400 favorite. Gabriel Marchines gets things underway here at who's number one, and immediately hunting after the arm drag is Andrew Wiltsey. This is a furious start, going straight into his preferred position, Chase. Yeah, Andrew Wiltsey loves to play reverse daily healer because not only of the inversions and normal jiu-jitsu tactics, but he loves to wrestle up from there, loves to grab a single, and just here he is right there, jumping on the single leg. That's the one thing that he loves to do. We expect a lot of that tonight. Yeah, I mean, you called it exactly as he initiated that maneuver, but did you notice Garmo's hand? And immediately sneaking around the neck. Yeah, Garmo's savvy, and he's surely done his homework on what Wilsey has to offer, and that's what makes it so fun. But I love it. They jump right into the action. No waiting around, as Andrew said, and going 1,000 miles an hour from the jump. Yeah, you're right. Now, we talked about the uh, about this a little bit in our pre-show analysis earlier, is that David Garmo is a notorious headhunter, that if he can grab your neck, he will squeeze it. He has a mean guillotine series. He has you know, options to go for the anaconda and the dars from there. But you will often see him use the guillotine to jump over and to pass the guard, which is not something we see too much of. Yeah, I think he said it best in his, his, pre -show, his uh, interview before the event where he uses unorthodox tactics, maybe even entering dangerous positions to try and improve his spot. But Andrew, Speaking of dangerous positions, look at that arm drag coming up now. Great recovery 
there from David Garmo, but man, that was close. It looked like Wilty was going to get the back there. Yeah, I don't think that's what Garmo meant when he <laughs> entered dangerous positions on purpose. You know, that was a great look from Andrew at the back, and David uh, barely got out of there by the skin of his teeth. But now he's reset in a very neutral position. Now, you mentioned this uh, when we were chatting yesterday because you had the, uh, let's call it the privilege, but it doesn't sound like it was a lot of fun, but you actually got to train. You got to shoot an episode of Fix My Game mm -hmm. with Andrew yesterday. Uh, it's one that a lot of people have been asking for and waiting for, but what did you get from that session on the mat with Andrew that you think that you know fans might see tonight? I mean, Andrew's timing on top was, was impeccable, right? He spent pretty much the entire time just passing me at will. And one thing he does is once there's just a narrow opening, just a sliver, which I gave him more than that, but if Garmo gives him just an opening for an underhook, we'll see he's all over, and that's all he needs. But he really wants to be on top, so he's happy to play guard and wait for his chance to sweep. But once he's on top, things will really get moving. So Garmo leading with that right leg, and that puts uh, Wiltsy into this, either the reverse Dele Heaver or the shin-on-shin -shin butterfly guard. You've seen Wiltsy, he's going for like a, uh, a dummy sweep kind of uh, attack, but what do you think he's going to go? You think he's going to try and wrestle up against somebody who's uh, so well-known at grabbing on the necks, or, or we can see here, heel hook attack, I'm sorry, heel hook attack, forcing Garmo to roll. Yeah, there's a brief grimace there on Garmo's face. I don't think he expected that. Wilty's not known as, as a leg locker, but clearly open to any and all attacks. And it's a smart strategy to, to open things up from Wilty and really give David a lot of things to think about. You know, you're right. He's not a big heel hook guy, right? We see Andrew, he loves using the single leg X guard. He loves going for like the straight angle. His brother is also a, uh, a high level uh, no gi grappler and has a, a mean straight angle. So you know that's something they're familiar with, but you don't see Andrew go for a lot of heel hooks. It's especially smart that they're still potentially, you know, a little dry, right? right? They haven't started sweating too much. So right now is the best time to get into a leg entanglement, um, especially if it's not your A game. You have a little more help with, with the texture and friction there. So uh, smart move from Andrew as he, you know, gets things going here. Yeah, really working from this uh, shin on shin of a seated guard. And you have to think that, you know, that is what Garma wants because he wants to kind of like cup the back of Wilty's head, bring it in, and then try to you know, snatch that that uh, guillotine. But man, Wilty's he's constantly harrying those ankles. He's going for that uh, more than once now. But Garmo, I think by now he kind of has a, a, a clear idea of what Andrew's looking for. Yeah, Garmo stayed very composed through all this. Andrew's working very hard, but he's not getting to uh, his positions all the way, right? He's getting near attacks, but as I say that, the back has presented itself for a moment. Can he get on top on this single leg? Wow, had. there it is. Big reversal there. Wrestling up. A little bit of a scramble. Wasn't just a clean takedown, so to speak. But Wiltsy was able to initiate a movement from Bogdan that put him on top. The crowd is calling for Panda Express for Andrew. That's, that's, that's the prize for him if he wins tonight. Look. Now, even though he didn't really establish position for any uh, length of time, you know, Garmo was up and out pretty quick. But the fact that right now, Wiltsy is the one in the driver's seat, right? He is the one initiating the movements, and Garmo is on the defense. As we come to the five-minute mark, and in just a second, we will see who the judges favor. You have to imagine there's going to be blue. It's going to be Wiltsy, just for that work rate alone. Yeah, again, hard, hard to deny that, but I, I would feel good if I was Garmo from the mere fact that he's gone out of danger. He's, he's seen some of Andrew's best looks and been able to get back to a very safe position. That is the kind of thing that really matters in a 15-minute match. And yeah, it is definitely blue. They, you know, I think there was no surprise given the submission attacks as well as the sweeps. Yeah, absolutely. But David is staying very calm, very composed, and showing the maturity in his game. Um, I, you know, I, I like what I've seen from both athletes out here. David Garmo, as you mentioned, he has an 80% submission rate. 40 of his 50 wins were by submission. 13 of those by knee bar. So he's not just a headhunter. He's actually pretty good at leg locks, too. Oh, absolutely. You know, David David is just all about the submissions at any cost, which is why he's so fun to watch. And uh, you can see the same thing in, in Wilsey's game, too, really. Wilsey is just uh, possessed in, in pursuit of the back and submission. In Wiltsy's last five matches, his last four wins. There goes David rolling over the top. over the top. But I think Wiltsy sensed that one. Very smart to get his back on the map pretty quick and recover. But in his last four matches, three of them were wins by points. And one was a win against PJ Barge via referee's decision right here on who's number one. Now, that is not... Andrew's preferred method of winning. He doesn't want to go out and win by points. He'd like to get the submission, but he's often talked about how he's had a hard time in getting people to really engage with him. 
I mean, I don't blame those other people. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Andrew is, is a honey badger, man. He'll rip things apart. So uh, playing a distance-based game is not necessarily a, a bad strategy. A little, little brief pause in the action. I wasn't sure if that was some gamesmanship or an actual... <laughs> I think it's good sportsmanship, actually. I mean, you yeah. could see that there was an issue bothering Garmo, and Wiltsy gave him a second to address it. So, But look at this now. Big butterfly guard sweep there from Wiltsy. Clean sweep. Beautiful technique. And now you mentioned the timing of the passing. Immediately, Wiltsy gets onto the side control and a little acknowledge, a little nod and a smile there. Man, that was some beautiful technique. Yeah, that's one thing that Wiltsy is so good at, is once he gets the momentum rolling, he does not stop until he's achieved a dominant position. And if you can see here, he's going to take his time and really cook Garmo. Uh, I had the pleasure of feeling Wiltsy's side control pressure, and he's so good at contorting the spine and just making things so miserable down there. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see him just put on the pressure here for a moment or two as he decides where to go next. But I think we're going to look for Wiltsy to try and sneak to the back somehow. Yeah, you almost see Garmo kind of like lifting his arms up and kind of like asking Andrew to take something because, you know, you just stay there flat. It could be hard to get out. But if a guy starts moving for a submission, it gives you the opportunity you need to escape. Yeah, very true. And now now the game slows down, right? Like, Wilt Wiltsy has achieved a very significant uh, moment in this match. Possibly moving to the mound here. He's got a knee far across the center line. And you can see that Garmo was uh, putting his hand on the knee to try and address it. But it could look like here you might see a possibly a mounted triangle from, uh, from Wiltsy or just step through over into the mount. But... Yeah, almost into the mount here. I mean, this is dangerous. Uh, Garmo is uh, is basically mounted at this point, even though the foot isn't flat on the ground. It's as good as. And, you know, you could see uh, Wiltsy step his right leg up, but no, you see a buck and a bump from Garmo on bottom because I thought he was maybe hunting for what looked like a monoplata there for a yeah, second. Yeah, uh, definitely a, a precarious situation there for Garmo. Now we're in full mount. And full mount in, in Nogi can be kind of a, a tough position to actually find the sub from. Well, we saw it earlier. Uh, we Jesse saw it tonight, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, um, many people will opt to try and force the back. And we see it looks like a gift wrapped attempt from Andrew. Uh, he's looking for it, but Garmo uh, is hip to that, tries to defend. I don't know. It looks like he could be very close to getting the back here. If, if Andrew rolls back exactly that way, he's got a very strong upper body control. Uh, looks like he has a seatbelt with a little bit of a uh, uh, hand fighting Both going on here. In. But yeah, their hooks are in. This is significant. This is, this is a bad spot for Garmo. Yeah, look for Andrew to trap the left arm of Garmo here. That's his go-to move. Um, and once that happens, then things are going to be very, very tough. Climbing the leg up and manages to isolate the arm. Now this is really bad. Garmo only has one hand with which to defend. That gives Wiltsy a really strong advantage at this point. He basically has uh, the ability now to fight that hand in under the chin. You see one arm rear naked choke. He's sliding in underneath the chin. He's walking the hand across the front of the neck. You could see him get the finish here. Very close grimacing on Garmo's face. Could see the finish here. The arm is getting deeper. Rear naked choke is seconds away. Can you get the tap? You can see, there it is, verbal tap. Man, you see, there was a slow burn, but Wiltsy was able to get the finish with the rear naked choke. A one-arm rear naked choke at that. Incredible finish there. Well done from Wiltsy, and great show. Sportsmanship to cap things off. What a match. And your winner, representing Pedago Submission Fighting, Andrew. Andrew Wiltsy goes 2-0 in his last uh, two Who's Number One matches. His first submission here on Who's Number One. And I gotta say, that was a uh, that was an impressive performance, Chase. You know, look at this, uh, the best moments here, the, the back take there. And you know, once he got to that position, man, he, he did such a great job of using his legs to isolate the arm and then sink in that, uh, that rear naked choke. Really something special. Yeah, phen phenomenal performance from Andrew there, especially that butterfly guard sweep a little bit later in the match. That really set things up. But once he got on the back, man, it was game over. That's his that's his position, and he is so tight there. The squeeze is incredible, and he's really efficient at trapping that arm. I mean, it doesn't take more than one attempt from him to, to secure the arm and then get the choke. Here's Beautiful that big butterfly sweep. sweep. here. Look at that. Very classic, old-school butterfly guard sweep. And uh, it was a picture-perfect uh, moment. And then you mentioned the timing of the guard passing. He didn't hang around. He just hopped and skipped over into the side control. And once he was there, well, it was very clear what he wanted. He was getting the uh, rear naked choke, and he managed to do so with one arm now. 
Andrew, man, you know, we've hung out a bit. You know, we uh, heard from you in the pre-match interview that you like to joke around, but you were all business tonight here. Who's number one? Well, I mean, there, there were some jokes in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, David Garo's my friend. I've always wanted to do a match with him. Uh, I'm so happy it got to happen, like, on a big stage. You know, he looked amazing in the match. Uh, I, like you, I liked how you called me efficient instead of lazy. That was a, that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Andrew, let's talk about the match then, because you know we uh, we saw a little bit of everything from you tonight. You know, you saw some, we saw some guard play, which of course you know you're well known for that single leg X, the uh, the open guard. But we saw you wrestling up, and of course the uh, the back control. Well, that was something else. How do you rate your performance? Uh, well, I mean, I stole most of it from Marcelo Garcia, uh, so <laughs> I thought I did good tonight. Um, I wanted to wrestle him a little bit. Uh, I didn't want to get guillotined, so those were kind of conflicting uh, objectives there, um, and. He figured out really quickly he wasn't going to pass me. He was just looking to kind of step in to the inside and then back step on a leg lock. Uh, I never really let him get past my shin on shin, which is kind of like my like initial first line of defense when I'm on my back. So. Now, of course, the last time you were here on the Who's Number One match, you know, you won by decision, but this is your first submission here at Who's Number One. How do you feel about that? My forearms are a little tired. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, no, I feel good. I, I wasn't very happy with my performance last time. I was too passive with PJ. I was... Uh, a little cagey about a 15 minute match because I don't know if you guys know this, but 15 minutes is a long ass time. So uh, then after the PJ match, I look back and I was like, man, I'm a fucking idiot. I should have gone harder. My cardio can handle it. I roll way harder than that every day. Uh, we, we've been putting up like some of my rolls on my YouTube and anyone who goes and looks it up can see I usually roll harder than I rolled with PJ. So I just wanted to turn it up a little bit, but I didn't want to get tapped out being stupid. So. Well, it was the perfect balance there of the, uh, the intent with the outcome. But, uh, man, you know, it's well known. You're a big fan of Panda Express. Does this mean now that Andrew Wiltsey gets his victory, Panda? Guys, everyone going and tagging Panda Express and going and messaging Panda Corporate, you guys are getting at them. I can feel it. Keep it up. Put the pressure on. With this close. With this close. That sponsorship it's is just, just this close. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe your dream will come true. Andrew Wiltsey, it's a pleasure to see you here in action. Who's number one yeah, once can, again? Can I do a quick shout out real quick? Absolutely. Yeah, can I shout out to my mom out in Hawaii, my dad in Michigan, uh, my old judo instructor, Mike Ogden, obviously everyone at Pedagos Mission Fighting and Daisy Fresh for just beating the shit out of me and then making me not look bad when I go to roll with other people. Uh, we've actually been doing a YouTube thing with Pedagos Submission Finding, so if you guys want to see cool, uh, you know, instructionals and shit, go ahead and check that out. What's Just the channel look up Pedagos Submission Finding. There you go. Guys, go search that and hit them with a follow. Andrew, it's always a pleasure to watch you here. Thanks, thanks so much. Thanks for having me on. Wow, what a match. That was a lot of fun. Coming up next, I think we've got another fun one, Chase. We've got Cade Rotolo versus Ethan Kralenstern. We'll be right back after this.